Hey guys, this is Todd from GreenZebraCreative.com and I'm going to do a quick tutorial for you on airbrushing and touching up a model's face. So first thing we're going to do is jump into Adobe Photoshop. This is CS6. You can use whatever version you have. Um, to save you some time, I've already done some touching up on this particular picture so you don't have to sit through a long drawn out process. To give you an idea of what I've done and what needs to be done as, a, as technically a first step on this particular process, is come over here to the healing brush, looks like a band-aid, grab it, and then what you're going to want to do is, for example, see this down here, we want to get rid of that, so we're going to go next to this with the healing brush, on the mat, click option, hold down option, excuse me, hit click, once you click that skin that's more or less where you, what you want the, the part you're fixing to be, go over to it and just click once, let it think, bam, it's gone. That's generally how a healing brush works. If you're an expert of Photoshop or been using it for a while, even you're probably like, whatever, I know that, great. But for people that don't, it's a great tool just to start with. Clean up some of that stuff, let it do its thing, think, bam. See, I could change it, I don't like that one, so we'll go like this. Okay, and that's how I kind of cleaned up most of her face. There was a little bit more stuff that needed to be taken care of out here, but it is what it is. So I got that taken care of for you. Once you get the face to where you want it, and some of these blemishes that, that aren't what you want in there. I don't know why my computer keeps freezing up. Sorry about that. I have no idea why I did that, but let's go ahead and go back here and undo the healing brush. All right, so here's the deal. Um, once you do that, then we'll, do, we'll duplicate the layer. Once it's duplicated, we're going to do a three-part filter. This is kind of what I do in most beginning stages of touching up a model skin. Once you got it as smooth as, as you can possibly get it, and this is not a great example because I would probably spend a little more time on her face and touch up some of the skin a little bit more, but I want to just give you a general overview of how we do this. So we go up here, three-part filter. First, let's go down here to noise. First thing we're going to do is dust and scratches. Again, this is on the top layer over here. Depending on the resolution, of whether you're using a low res, like a 72 dots per inch uh, file for the internet or a high resolution JPEG or RAW file, this is going to depend. Roughly, we're going to use about 10. You can look at it and decide. It's subjective. The more you do, the more surreal or cartoon or milky it's going to look. Uh, the less it's going to be more subtle. And that really is going to come down to the skin to begin with, the quality of the photograph, the resolution, etc. For this case, let's just go ahead and grab a 10 right there on the radius of dust and scratches, hit OK, and let it process that filter. Now, through this process, it's going to look worse before it looks better. That's normal, and that's to be expected. So don't think you're screwing it up, because you're not. It just looks, it's going to look worse at each one of these steps until we add the mask. So I'll get to that, though. Don't worry. So just do that in your top layer. Once it filters the dust and scratches, it's going to look like it's dust and scratches, kind of blurry. Um, and speaking of blurry, we're going to go back up to the filters to blur, and we're going to add a Gaussian blur. Gaussian, Gaussian, whatever you call it, but that's what the biz is. So anyways, I particularly on this picture am going to use 2.5 on the radius. Again, it's subjective, but you want to give it some blur to the skin. Hit OK. Okay, once you hit OK, we're going to go to the last of the three part filter. Go back to noise. Instead of dust and scratches, we're going to go up to add noise. Now we want to add just a little bit of noise, not too much. You know, you pull it up, you pull it up obviously high and it looks horrible and it's just a bunch of, of, of noise. But we just want a little bit. So let's just do two. So it gives it a little bit of texture in that blur. So maybe it has, I don't know, a little more bite to it. I don't know what we call that, but that's that's what it is. So We'll go ahead and, and let that process. Okay. Once that process is there, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and add a layer mask. Once we do that, make sure that our background palette here, you can use hotkeys, but I'll just show you this the old-fashioned way. Make sure that's already which it was on 000 RGB black. And then we're going to go back up here to, to this tool and drop the paint bucket on it. And bam, now it looks back to normal. Everything we just did seems to have just disappeared, which is what you want it to look like. 
it looks now it looks just like the background layer that's disappeared. Now we go down here to your palette. Again, you can use hotkeys. I'm gonna do this this way for you that don't know hotkeys. And we're gonna go change it to white. And we're gonna grab a brush. Any brush is fine. You pick a brush out of your palette. And with once this is white, we're gonna start painting her skin. Okay. Now I have a little funny trick I do to this, which looks really bad, but it helps me. Now I'll go down here to the palette on that particular layer, and let's just say I do color burn. Okay, now with the color burn, I can see where I've painted and where I haven't painted. Now what I want to do here is not touch the hairline. I'm going to do this pretty quick, too, so I would definitely spend a little more time if this is a client or this is a job that you're, you're taking serious. I'm just doing this for just to show you the general overview of how to start on touching up a model's face. So once you get this, you want to, again, avoid the hair. You're also going to want to avoid things like nostrils, eyes. You can get in here and touch up some of these wrinkles under her eyes or, you know, creases, and that's fine. It's up to you. It's going to dull those out a little bit. On her dimples, you want to be careful because, like, right in there, I wouldn't touch that because it's going to take out some of that effect and it's going to change kind of the way she looks. And since that's kind of a, an endearing quality of this girl's particular smile, we don't really want to dull that down at all. So again, we're painting her face, and it's kind of interesting, but you know, we take a little more time if we're going to do this for a client, so this is just, use this as a general overview and then sit down and spend some, some real time doing it. I'd stay away from the crease down here of the nose, because that's going to really affect the, uh, the, the feel to it right there. In fact, that one maybe was a little too much there. So what we're going to do is uh, get most of her face that we can. Excuse me, sorry about that. And again, if this looks funny, no problem. But we'll get, when we'll touch up down here, you know, get the chin and stuff, but we won't touch teeth, we won't touch lips. This is correctable if you do, but I would kind of avoid it in the, in the initial process. Change the size of your brush to get into these spots. Let me get the face all drawn in. Okay. Because my Photoshop is running slow too, I'll just move on from here. But once we go in, color burn doesn't mean anything. It just is easier to see. So if you go back to normal, now you, what you can see is you got some smoother, creamier skin. There's without it. There's with it. Um, the more extreme you do dust and scratches, the more extreme the blurs are, the more that's going to pop out, be creamy, again, kind of cartoon-like. Uh, some of the secrets when we like to do HDR stuff and some of the more surreal stuff we do with hip-hop covers, we end up doing that much, much more extreme. And then we can adjust it here, obviously, on the layer, the opacity, to, to get exactly where you want it to be and go from there. Uh, the end result, of course, of like this particular picture, we want to go ahead and get rid of this arm. The, the, it's in it from the photography to begin with. Um, darken some of this in down here. Um, you know, add some of these blues over here and get the focal point more to her face. That's maybe for another tutorial. Bottom line is the end result should look like this. And we did this earlier to save you time. I'm not going to go through the whole step. There's a few other key tricks we do. I'm not going to show you a couple of those because it's just what we do. <laughs> but as far as uh, that's the end result you should get. So as you can see from the beginning of that picture, and like I said, it was cleaned up even before this. So there was quite a bit of blemishes that we took out just to get it to what you're looking at right now. You add that cream to it. And it's a good beginning process of how to airbrush a model. Um, if you need to know more and more steps on how to go maybe more advanced and some of the more advanced Photoshop tricks, feel free to reach out to me at greenzebracreative.com. And you could also find us on Facebook under Green Zebra Creative. Uh, we'd be glad to answer any questions you may have, but for now, that's the deal. So if you want to make a picture go from, say, this to this, that's a good place to start. Not everything. We're going to do a lot more things to it. There's going to be some adjustment layers and, and, and some different things going on to get it. As you can see, we kind of took out the arm and some of the things over here. Uh, but that's a good start to airbrushing models' faces, artists' faces, um, you know, whoever your subject may be in photography, if you want to clean up their skin and do the whole airbrush thing, kind of like Playboy type of deal. I mean, obviously, it's a little more how people don't look, but the end result is right there. So, from this 
for this. There you have it. Todd, GreenZebraCreative.com. See you on the next one.